Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, March 17th. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, it's me, the Wombat. Cool. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. I guarantee it. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? What would Mr. Rogers do? And the reason why I bring that up is I want to do a comparison of potentially better figures for Christianity than just the ones, the stock ones we get from the Bible. Because I, I guarantee you that there are better ones. And I don't think there's a better example of representing uh, healthy values that align with what's purported in Christianity, modern Christianity as how we should conduct ourselves in society than what Mr. Rogers has demonstrated in his lifetime in his television show, Mr. Uh, the uh, I think it's called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Uh-huh. But Fred Rogers himself, great guy, advocate for education, music, learning, and also proudly Christian. And I think, you know, it's a good thing to note that, you know, even as atheists, we could recognize good Christians as along with like really, really terrible ones because – what we really just want is what everybody wants, a nice, healthy life where everybody can work with each other and improve everyone's uh, standards. So uh, I, that's my topic for the show. But before we jump into it, Larry, I heard you've been doing some gaming. Let's talk about some gaming. Let's. Oh, let's yeah. I've been gaming. playing Crisis recently. Crisis, crisis. Network or whatever it is. Not the original S- Crisis. No, you no. Don't, you this weren't is there with one. the memes. C-R-Y-S-I-S. And it takes place in New York and you're fighting aliens. Okay. Uh, it's but that's the original. The original was also called uh, Crisis with CRY. Uh, yeah, I, but it was on a tropical island, so it's yes. not the same game. So this is industrial New York uh, Crisis, where the aliens are like, hey, get off the sidewalk. I'm walking over here. I'm walking over here. <laughs> yeah, more like killing over here. <laughs> uh, I'm killing well, over yeah. here. Okay. Well, And also, it's uh, uh, Earth had just gotten uh, some kind of super bug that killed mm. most of the population. Which was probably sent uh, to Earth by the aliens to decimate the population before they started. But anyway, Larry, interesting on, shoot 'em up game, first person yeah. shooter. Larry, you're on your third first person exploration shooting mechanic game. Is that typically your third. style? Yeah, because you did Starfield, which is first person run around, shoot, 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 right? Uh, Metro, run around, shoot, 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 but scary. And then I'll Crisis, yeah. run around, shoot, shoot, shoot. You uh, say you're forgetting. Like you're you're forgetting Doom. Um, Doom you play, gosh. which is the same I, thing. That's first person shooter. It's yeah, fighting so I, aliens generally. So, so you like um, Wolfenstein even, you played? Uh, Wolfenstein way, play way, way back in the beginning. When that was like the first first person shooter. Yeah. It was almost 2D, but it was third person. Would you say um, it's your cup of tea then? Was yes, that your it's, cup of tea? It's, it's my main thing. Right now, my main thing is first person shooters out in uh, a wide open world. Okay. Where you can now, just go wherever you want and do what you want. So parents pay attention. Don't let your kids play first person shooters. It'll turn into atheists like Larry. Lifelong atheists. It'll, it's it's, it's going to ruin your kids. <laughs> no, it's it's just it good fun. And we were start talking before the game, I mean, sure. before the show, that uh-huh. uh, most wives don't like their husbands playing computer games much. But that's the thing. I mean, you know where they are all right. the time. They're right, right there in the house with you and with the kids. And mm. uh, it's, you know, it's not out getting in trouble and not yeah. out doing stuff he shouldn't be doing. Well, you know, encourage your husband to play computer games. Maybe it's a mix of the both because <laughs> my favorite games are uh, simulation games. I like simulator mm-hmm. games yeah. because they yeah, teach the, me how to too. do stuff in real life, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so one of the things I'm doing right now is learning how to play fly a drone. And this controller is really interesting. So like compared to, I'm holding up two different controllers for the radio listeners. This is an Xbox controller. It has two joysticks. It's got buttons on both sides. A drone controller just has the joysticks, right? Because when you're flying, you're not really pushing buttons. You're just changing your pitch, yaw, throttle, and... and, uh, I've never used it very much. But it's 
it's a different way of holding the joysticks and it's mm -hmm. uh, a radio frequency and you can do simulations on your computer with the actual joystick where you dial in the the flight dynamics of the drone that you're going to mm -hmm. fly with and you just yeah. do virtual space try to get as many rounds in as possible so that instead of thinking about what you need to do it's all muscle memory and then the fun part is when you actually set up at a park and you try flying and in your head, you're like, I know what to do, but now I know crashes are expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I oh, know yeah. if I if I can't pick up myself up off the ground and I don't break my joint, I still have to pick, get up and walk 3,000 feet out to this thing and pick it up and bring it back home. So, like, the pressure is on a different level until mm -hmm. you just get more and more and more used to it and more confident with it. Yeah. Though I did go out yesterday to fly at a park nearby. And what was funny was um, I'm flying around at a park. There's a bunch of kids. Everyone's having picnics. But I'm like maybe uh, 350 feet up in the air, right? And so you can barely hear it. It sounds like a really angry hornet, like maybe 20 yards away. But people will be like, oh, what's going on there? And the kids will be like looking at it, staring at it. I can see it with my camera. But I'm not focused on recording people. I'm just focusing on like practicing my flips and tumbles. And then every 15 or 20 minutes or so, I got to come back down to land, switch up my batteries and go back up again. Sure. But when I land, there was a bunch of kids, since I'm wearing uh, FPV goggles, a bunch of kids come up to me and they're like, oh, can I try that? And I'm like, oh, that's cool, kid. Where's your parents? <laughs> I, I, I try not to talk to kids. But their mom was there, like nearby, nearby. Mm -hmm. Like kids that just came up from like a picnic uh, blanket and they walked up to me and they're like, hey, can I try that? I was like, oh, you got to be a licensed pilot to fly, which is true. In the state of in America, for the drone of my weight class, you have to have a license. Likewise, you have to also be You have to take a test. You have to take a certification test and you have to be licensed, which costs money, right? So like those two things compounded. Um, when I told that to the kids, they were a little disappointed, but I let them hold the drone and they could see like how heavy it was and they could like touch it and stuff like that. That's fine with me. Yeah. And one of the moms who was there was like, oh, thanks for letting my kids like, you know, uh, learn about this. And that was cool. The other mom, though, was like, so you can just record wherever, whenever you want. Wherever you want, you can just do, you can just record anywhere. And so like, here's, I took this very tactfully because I, my impression was I'm not here to like argue or anything like that, right. but in a public space, there's no expectation of privacy. So if you go out to public and you put a blanket out in the middle of the grass, it's no different than a, the, a car drove by with a dash cam or someone took a picture on their cell phone, or someone popped open a laptop to do some work. Like everything has cameras. You've been recorded so many times once you left your house. There's no expectation of privacy outside. So like that, I didn't bring that up, but I did say, hey, if you'd like to take the certification yourself, it's called the trust certification. It's issued by the Federal Aviation uh, uh, Agency, and it'll tell you all the rules and you can get yourself certified. And it'll explain to you uh, the different classes of drones and how what you what you're allowed to record and what not to record and then i just went back to keep flying but it was funny because when i told her she can take the trust certification she pulls out a giant phone from her pocket which i know has gps has a microphone has multiple cameras on both sides mm -hmm. and her, probably her credit card information and mm -hmm. her call history and you know whatever website browsers that she was using at the time and maybe even a facebook account that has yeah, all which is brands. tracking every single thing about her yeah i'm just saying like don't be worried. My problem, the problem isn't mine. Mine's just a cell phone with wings. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, uh, a lot of people love an omnipresent God, which always blows my mind because it seems like we have a natural disposition to want not want to be surveilled. But when it comes to God, we want him everywhere at all times. Watching everything we do. Recording. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. recording every single I didn't know practice. that, but ready to cast you into hell for the slightest provocation right yeah. or even your thoughts like you can right. get punished mind for your control. thoughts yeah mm -hmm. yeah like just what is it coveting someone's wife is a problem like even like oh wow that's a pretty lady like that's a problem and even in your head it's not even an action like that is the ultimate don't think about strawberries moment where you're just like oh no now i'm in trouble but yeah. i did want to extend this to you know, we do have role models that we could base our life on to be more godly, even if we were being constantly surveilled by God, because what Christians will tell you is we'll just be like Jesus. What would Jesus do in a situation like this? And I thought to myself, why are we thinking about Jesus? Because <laughs> Jesus mm -hmm. is, in my mind, yeah. sort of like the 
it's sort of like a high school student whose dad owns the school and is the principal and part-time superintendent and has a car that his parent and dad drove and like has basically nothing but privilege his entire life. Like you're talking about a human being that genetically doesn't even have a dad who's 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 part spiritual who can do magic tricks and touch things and t- bring them back to life who doesn't die who can come back to life or does die but can come back to life again like he's not playing by the same rules that i'm playing by so how could i why would i want to be like him would i want to have a more closer to an actual human experience and still see the good values that a lot of people before christianity has a monopoly on and i found a great example of this Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers from the television show, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, is, in my opinion, one of the best people to have existed, religious or non-religious. Like, he's not going to probably get any award from any of the major bodies because I don't really pay attention to, like, Nobel Prize laureates or, like, who becomes a saint or anything like that. But in my book, Mr. Rogers is a top drawer kind of guy. And I came up with a list of reasons why I believe that. And I want to compare them to a similarly composed objective list with using chat GPT to see, you know, what stands up from what would Mr. Rogers do versus what would Jesus do? And maybe we can talk about it on the show. Does that sound cool to you? Works for me. All right. Awesome. 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 So I ran a question through chat GPT basically saying, Hey, give me the uh, top 10 things that Mr. Rogers uh, was known for, or let me see, let me, I'll tell you the exact question. Sure. 10 remarkable things that Jesus did in his life versus 10 remarkable things that uh, Fred Rogers did in his life. And Mr. Rogers, number one, promoted kindness and empathy. And if you were to ask me what the two cornerstones of any religion should be, it should be and what kindness. they say it is. Yes. The it lip should. service. Yes, it should. Yes, dude. Absolutely. It is lip service because it should be not this is what you got to do to avoid hell, or this is who your your authority figures are, or this is what you shouldn't do, or these are the rules of our club, or this is how much money you need to give us once a month. It's you should be kind and empathetic. And through his iconic television show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Fred Rogers promoted kindness, empathy, and understanding among children and adults alike. And if you were to ask me, what's something that the current generation of kids, the current generation, I'm here with my whippersnapper suspenders on, we're both on our porch, Larry. We're just like, you know, problem with kids today? (laughs) (laughs) It's a lack of kindness and empathy. And I can see that both in kids and adults as well. In fact, um, I've been on a a rabbit hole of watching Uber videos, dash cams from Uber drivers. Just have the worst people get in their car. Just the worst people's like, I'm not masking. Or like, I want to change. I'm not paying you money. It's like you mm-hmm. you sign the app. It's like I'm canceling the ride if you're going to be rude to me. It's like I want you to speed. Like people who walk into someone else's car and assume that they're their butler. That's just the mm-hmm. most insane thing. And I, and I think to myself, man, I do not want to subject myself to <laughs> interactions mm-hmm. with society if I ever deal with toxic people like that. We mm-hmm. need more kindness and empathy. What do you think, Larry? Oh, absolutely. And uh we 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 do see it an awful lot in our in our society. We live a pretty darn good life. Mm-hmm. We have a, we we, the world is full of plenty if we just uh, realize it. Um, but what gets me is the people, um, the religious people who claim to own the own morality and truth yep. are often immoral and yep. and and lie uh, mm-hmm. constantly, especially about their religion and about the opposition. I right. mean, how many lies have you heard told about atheists? Right. Uh, and why would they do that if they own the truth? If the, mm-hmm. if everything that they do is all about the truth of, of the Bible and, and morality and all that too, it just, it just hypocritical to me. Yeah. The narrative has become so, tribalistic that we do, that most people don't care how bad their leaders are or how bad their narrative is as long as it's their narrative yeah. right well, I if thought, i was if i it. was starting a religion mm. the first thing i'd do is put in claims about how my god wants you to be good to everybody mm. that way after people get into the religion you can say see we're good yeah. to each other because <laughs> our god said to do that yeah yeah uh, yeah like we were never good to each other back in the days of egypt <laughs> Or, right. you know, before Christianity, before Judaism. Right. 
like the baseline, the very true baseline for society should be don't go out of your way to be mean to each other. You don't have to be good. We're not making that an obligation. It's good if you are good, but don't be mean to each other. And if you have mm -hmm. that, you have basically a, a state where if everybody follows that rule, you have people who aren't necessarily contributing, but aren't holding down society. And then right. the rare instances where people are taking on additional work and, and drive to be extra good, that averages towards slightly good without having to punish people with uh, for who, are, who, are, who aren't being good. Because you shouldn't mm -hmm. be, in my mind, obligated to do good because at that point you're being voluntold to be good. You're not mm -hmm. actually volunteering for well, a self-rewarding activity i mean it is uh, if it you is. do good then you know the old thing about karma uh people will see you as good and see you as and uh, as treating you, people fairly and and that will come back to you in in many ways treat people uh mean or evil mm -hmm. and you reap the rewards for it from 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 your actions yes yeah. it's, it's long, as simple as that long you want to live in a good world be good Right. Long term, if you care about your surroundings and the neighborhoods that you're in, you can be you can begin to look at different ones who are following the rule of, well, I don't have to be good. But the ones who are good, the ones who are contributing, they actually make their society a lot better. They have mm -hmm. better roads. They have better teachers. Well, I want to live there and I'm willing to contribute to society if it takes if pay and taxes. They have a they have a better future too. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Contributing to the next generations. I think we can objectively see, even if we didn't ask or force people to be kind and empathetic, that being kind and empathetic or promoting it is actually a really good way of moving forward. And what I love about Mr. Rogers is he's not pointing at the camera and saying, you need to be kind, you need to be empathetic. I am your God or I'm the son of your God and I'm teaching you to do this. Or it's the it's, holy word from this book. Yeah, it was yeah. It was literally that. It was promoting kindness and empathy. Like I'm going to be kind and empathetic on my show. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to be caring of people who are different than me. And I'm going to show you the benefits that I'm reaping as a reward from that. And I think that's a good practice for you to follow as well. It's an option for you to do that I am demonstrating on my show. And I found that so good. I always found Mr. Rogers is a good uh, teacher in the true sense where he demonstrates what he was teaching rather than just literally espousing it as an authority figure to his followers, right? I never got that feeling from him. Right. So go to the flip side. When I go to Jesus Christ, this is his first thing. So if Mr. Rogers promoted kindness and empathy, the one remarkable thing, first remarkable thing from ChatGPT as my objective source, uh, Jesus taught love and compassion. Jesus preached messages of love, compassion, and forgiveness, emphasizing the importance of treating others with kindness and empathy. So while it's similar, I have a problem with the teaching aspect because Jesus very much is not meeting you one-to-one, -one, like how Mr. Rogers is, where he's like, here's my home. I'm going to put my shoes on. I'm going to take my cardigan off. Maybe I'll make some juice. You want you? want I can't give you juice because this is just a TV show. This is a set, kids. But you want to talk about like sharing or divorce or something like that? Like we can, we can talk some hard topics. Jesus, by the way, is like, let me stand on top of a mound. All of you sit down there. I hope you like mm -hmm. fish and bread. Because <laughs> that's what you're eating. And this is... I'm going to explain to you like my sermon where I'm talking about like how cool my dad is. And I'm going to talk about that for a while. And now I'm going to talk about how cool I am and why you got to be my friend. Cause the only path to heaven is through me. And, and you know, while yeah. it's told that it's love and compassion, honestly, a lot of the stories that Jesus told were about how families would be separating and that he was a sword to split sons and mm -hmm. fathers apart in their own households. Right. And, and how right. rich people and, would have and, a hard time getting in heaven and not poor. Right. And his his hidden message was there on the reward side. I mean, you don't do good for each other just to do good and be good. Right. You do it to achieve a reward in the next life. Right. You're doing uh, it for a know, carrot. Right. And um, that's a little... Uh, this disingenuous i guess yes. the, the real reason you should be good is to be good and make a better society i mean it's exactly. and that's something we can see in this this world no matter which next world comes well put well put yeah the the value of being good is that it improves the surroundings and the people that who will live in your environment not so that you can get into heaven not so that you can sit to the right side of jesus and yeah. watch his you know brand new car and and hang out with his dad with his video game his PlayStation nine or whatever. It's like, who cares about that? It's it's about the world that we're in right now that matters. And I feel like Mr. Rogers emphasis is be good for the sake of good so that you can improve 
and and improve the world that you're in whereas jesus and the life like, you live yeah just just day-to-day -day life living. yeah and jesus has no message on any of that he's just like this is your path this is the scheme this is how we're going to get to heaven guys <laughs> pick up some trash it'll count for jesus points trust me yeah. that's the only reason yeah. why you need to do it yeah like what about to take well, care what, of other people it's like we don't care about other people right we're the chosen people right what gets me is is you know christians are always calling it unconditional love you know jesus has unconditional love for you well, unless you, until you break some some sins or unless you do something he doesn't want you to do, then, you know, your reward is a lot of uh, eternity of, of pain, torture. Mm. Yep. Um, it's just, it is fully conditional. Yes. Uh, and what gets me is he preaches, uh, com, you know, love and compassion, but it comes right down to it. And they ask him what I need to do to get into heaven. Right. Remember what he said? Follow the Ten Commandments. That has nothing to do with love and command, compassion. Absolutely. It has everything to do with obedience. Right. And there are other problems, too, where he's like, you know, there are some terrible laws that exist. What do you think about that? Well, what Caesar's is Caesar's and what's God is mm. God. It's like, don't separate those rules. You could just be like, hey, slavery is a bad thing. We shouldn't be doing yeah. slavery. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things that are going on back there that I can talk about on YouTube. But I can use it to uh, transition to our next topic because if we still have some time i want to bring up that mr rogers uh number three on this list is he had, he addressed important topics he fearlessly addressed important and sometimes difficult topics on a show such as death divorce and disability and this helped children navigate these issues with honesty and compassion and i remember when uh there was a a plane crash and it, and, it, and people died and i didn't understand why that was a bad thing like i understand that planes this is when you machines. were a christian this is when I was a Christian and a child, like when I was maybe like seven. And, okay. I, rem and I, I remember there was a plane crash and it was talked about in Mr. Rogers' TV show. And I thought to myself like, whoa, planes crash because they're machines, but there were people inside them? I didn't understand that. And in the concept of his show, he explained like, you know, about like, like in a sense, national tragedies. But he talked about it in a way that I wasn't scared from how he was talking about it and that I understood the sense of loss that came with it and then he even made a book that that was like essentially about like how to like talk to your kids about like bad things that happen in the world hmm. i just thought that was so good to have an adult willing to communicate with me in a way that like i could appreciate that didn't feel like i was being talked down to i seen that clip again on youtube but it's still really good here's what jesus does jesus will on his third on his list is heal the sick and disabled he performed numerous miracles, including healing the sick, blind, mm -hmm. deaf, and disabled, demonstrating his compassion and divine power. And my issue with this comparison is that um, Mr. Rogers will talk about disability and divorce and, and death and normalize them with respect to those who have died, those who have gone through a divorce like my parents did, or those who have a disability that can't necessarily get them healed. Whereas Jesus, in his mind, his worldview and demonstrated in this book, would be like, oh, you're blind? Bop, you're not blind anymore. Ha ha. Well, what about the yeah. 300,000 other blind people that are behind yeah. us? Like, what about blindness anymore. in general? Nah. Why didn't he just cure blindness in the human nah. race? Nah, nah, nah. I just want to do this for the magic trick. Okay. <laughs> for yeah. me. So, like, for people who are disabled and deaf, like, the stigma that comes with them being incapable or needing to be healed sticks. Whereas with Mr. Rogers, you talk about disability, people who don't have legs or arms and demonstrate that they're still capable and that they're still people. Like, I feel like that is something that needs to be expressed with demonstration and through Mr. Rogers' efforts compared to what Jesus did. Right. And I just find what it really, surprising. What, what gets oh. me about uh, Jesus, I mean, he raises people from the dead, literally. Yeah. They were dead. They were dead for days. He brought them back. And that's the end of the story. Nobody <laughs> asked them what it was like to be dead, where they went. Is there a heaven or is there a hell? They never address any of that from the people that they brought back from the dead. Mm. Just, I mean, why not? Because they've got nothing to say. Right. And the thing is, people still die. And even those dead people he brought back mm -hmm. are dead again. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, right. it's a question of what I've been better off with Mr. Rogers approach where he talks about death and in a, in a sensible way and explains uh -huh. why it happens and why, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of it, but it is a part of life compared to 
imagine if Jesus did that once. He's just like, let me just talk about death for a little bit. Like, it's not mm -hmm. something to be worried about your entire life for, but it's a part of life. And, you know, yeah. it's more about celebrating your life than it is about worrying about your death your entire life. Right. And then Jesus is like, no, don't worry about death. It doesn't it doesn't exist. It's just a change of address. When you die, mm -hmm. you're going to hang out with me. If yeah. you're good, and if you give me a little bit of money, <laughs> and if you worship me, it's the only thing I'm asking for. Just listen to what I say. Give me a little bit of your money and worship me. It's that simple. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, we gotta remember that. There were, or my dad. Before, yeah, before Jesus, there was no heaven or hell. I mean, yeah. he's the one who brought eternal punishment, eternal uh, aggrandizement. Right. Um, it's just. Why, why wasn't it mentioned before? Did the, the, the Jewish people not know anything about heaven or hell? Mm. Matter of fact, uh, Jewish people today, I understand, don't really believe in heaven or hell. They they just believe you kind of cease to exist. Mm. Uh, if you're a Jewish person and have a, a, a meant, want to mention something about that, please leave a comment. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I think we're near the bottom of the half hour, right? We are. All right, let's do a quick break. Okay, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter 5, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a minute to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year. Uh, we have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather, outside on the deck. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org. Or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville and you still need to go to meetup.com and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. Right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? I really want to go back to this list of Mr. Rogers and what he's done in his life, remarkably. That could be used to set an example for Christians and atheists alike versus Jesus and what he's done to set examples for the same crop of people. And what I'm finding more often than not is that Mr. Rogers is a better mm, representation slash mentor slash kind demonstration of good values that I think we should really try to exemplify in our current society compared to what Jesus Christ did with his entire time here. And I will just say this as, as simple. One of my, as a simple fact, one of my best and favorite memories from his show is that he would always start a show with that piano song, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll do a full intro of the little model town, you know, da -da 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 -dun, dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun. and it's like a long intro. I want to compare and contrast how his show starts to compare to any kid's show starts these days, where it's just quick cuts, quick cuts. Here's here's Alexander. He's a superhero, and he could turn into this. Da, 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 da. Alexander's a uh -huh. like loud music, loud flashing mm -hmm. lights. Show the entire plot line. You only have thirty seconds to do this, guys. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Sell toys, sell toys. You can do this. Make it happen. And whereas Mr. Rogers like a steady four minute like song, more like <laughs> extended song. And we're not doing, only... doing normal things like changing his shoes, putting on a sweater. Know. Yeah. Close up on a door, he opens up the door, he starts singing, and it's just like there's an old man singing on TV, and he's not singing fast. It's a pretty slow song. There's not a lot of accompaniment with it. And not only that, but the craziest thing is not only he takes off his jacket, puts on another jacket slowly, sits in front of like everybody and starts taking off his shoes and putting on a new pair of shoes. And you're uh -huh. like, what's going on? He's tying shoes. We've been doing this show for like for six minutes, and there's an old man singing, tying his shoes. Hey, he, was, he wasn't that old. He, ah. he looked like he was about 45, <laughs> you know, or 40. Sure, sure. He really wasn't gray haired but or anything. How do we sell this to kids? How do we sell mm -hmm. this to kids? We got to like G.I. Joe's next up in the next half hour block. How do we compete yeah. with Spider Man? No, people don't time? realize that really young kids want stability, they want there you go. Uh, safety, they want. Mm. Um, they don't want you to jerk things around and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, he he was he had a show for very young children. 
you know, right. like pre kindergarten. So he wasn't like eight, nine, ten, you know, uh, age kids who want all this action have you, and and mayhem. <laughs> have you seen Paw Patrol? Have you seen like Peppa Pig? Like sh- episodes that are yeah. only like five minutes long because they know kids have to like they're gonna lose their attention span very quickly. You have to like yeah. keep kids entertained. You have mm-hmm. to sell toys. You gotta like have them with cartoons. It's gotta be colorful. Whereas Mr. Yeah. Rogers, like I'm tying my shoes, and if the song, this is the thing that blew my mind. If he's still singing and the song ends, won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Won't you please be my neighbor? And he's still tying his shoes. He's going to keep tying his shoes. He doesn't rush. The mm-hmm. entire time, he's just like, oh, I didn't finish tying my shoes yet. I'm just going to finish tying my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Before he starts yeah. the show. Yeah. And, and he like, wasn't. Oh, it's so yeah. relaxing. Yeah. He wasn't just an actor either. He created the show. Right. He, he's composed the music. He was the mm. producer and the head mm. writer. Yeah, Mr. Rogers. So it was his show. He conceived it and made it happen. Right. Just the way he wanted. And I I just love that he could teach patience, you know, because one of the main things I feel like, again, here I am on my porch that, you know, we I feel are lacking as a society is patience. All the habits, all the hobbies that we have stress sort of like a YOLO or a you got to do this now or time's running out or this is a limited deal or everything stressing on time being a limited resource. Whereas to watch a full episode of Mr. Rogers is sort of an expectation or setting up the expectation of things are going to take some time, but it's totally fine. It'll be worth it. Let's just relax yeah. and watch and relax. Right. And you mentioned before the show that um, he he was honest about everything he did. He, he talked about the puppets being yes. puppets yes. Uh, the you know nothing was uh unexplained or left of the imagination other than just the story that he was telling correct but uh jesus was all about the magic and, and he was a <laughs> hero figure uh in the old uh traditional uh sense of a of hero in a story right you know he did a uh, tragedy i guess you could call it because he you know he did all these wondrous things mm-hmm. and because he did all those wondrous things you know they right. had to bring him down and kill him you know and hang him up as a, but, but jesus was know. also the ultimate by now not later marketer because his whole right. idea was within your lifetime the kingdom of heaven's going to come down right so mm-hmm. i'm your last chance right now start worshiping me right now i'm right here mm-hmm. you're here make this happen or I'm going to go, right? I'm not going to be here forever and your opportunity is going to go away, guys. <laughs> yeah. And they've been like saying that the beginning. end of the world is nigh for 2,000 right. years now. Right? Yeah. You get a clue. Right. It's not. It's, it's not. <laughs> he's not teaching patience. He's not teaching honesty, right? Because like I, as you said, Larry, it's like it's been 2,000 years and he's still playing hide and seek apparently. Um, not only that, but I also feel like um, one of the cool things Mr. Rogers did was he went behind the curtain. Like he shows you, hey, this is the piano that's playing when I when I when I sing. There's a lady who plays it, but I can also know how to play music too. But uh, she go on and play some music, Linda, and she plays the music. Mm-hmm. He went to the actors who happens in his make believe town. He went to that studio set, which is right next to his show. And he's like, these are actors, but they're also my friends. And we do this show where we pretend that we are on the stage. I'm just being honest with you. Like this is a puppet. This is a trolley. I can I control it with these two buttons. You can see me doing it in the show. It's not like it's a magical thinking trolley. I don't want you to be concerned with the concept of magic. Like reality already is cool enough. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like I can appreciate mm-hmm. that mindset. And remember, re- Mr. Rogers is a Christian, right? So like mm-hmm. I can appreciate that mindset, that honesty from a Christian minded person that can still enable me, even with my secular mindset now to still respect that show so genuinely because it's not intrusive on my viewpoints of reality because he's being honest right and he's keeping largely his dogma away from being force fed to me as a child i just thought that was so good whereas jesus is nothing but dogma first you know Mm -hmm. it's like hey let me tell you about my dad it's like dude i know your dad's the god it's like yeah my dad's god so what are you gonna do about it (laughs) he's that's literally his entire motif, his entire yeah. show, to the point where people get so annoyed. They're like, can we kill Jesus, please? Can we kill this guy? It's like, my dad's God. Oh, please shut up, Jesus. How do we make this the guy die faster? Let's crucify him. It's like, is that the fastest way we can kill people? Fine, whatever. All right, go for it. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So other thing that uh, Mr. Rogers did was, as you had discussed, 
Um, he uh, had that piano music, so he promoted music and the arts. He integrated music, art, and creativity into his programming, recognizing the importance of fostering imagination and emotional expression. And I thought, that is cool. It would be nice to um, hear from Jesus some human, some humanity that he valued. Because human humanity at that time, Mesopotamia, like had built brilliant statues, had a culture, had poetry, you know, like we, they had music, but you never hear Jesus espouse on like, hey, this is like, some really cool things that humans only do. And you should be really proud that you were able to create this. And this is like a joint effort came from a lot of different minds putting together and you made something really beautiful. The beauty was always about God. And the only time I've ever seen Jesus relax and have a good time was when he was making wine for his buddies or hanging out in the desert. But like it was right. never a time to appreciate the humanity. Yeah. And about, about the only story that really could show compassion is the one mm -hmm. where uh, they were stoning this woman, or were going to, and he said, you know, that the first one who has no sin uh, cast the first stone. But that was really about obedience. It mm. was about uh, a sin. It was about you know, a lot of things. Uh, it should have been about compassion, mm. you know, and empathy for the woman, but right. it wasn't. And that's that's an opportunity missed. Yeah, there's other missed opportunities too. I think there's is Jesus the one who came up with the Good Samaritan story? Mm, I don't know. It was I think Jesus, it was, was that just a Jesus a, parable? Because I know Jesus no, I don't think it was. So, so was that a? I knew it was in the New Testament. Um, I'm going to assume. All right, okay. So if that's not the case, then that's fine. But like, I feel bad for Samaritans <laughs> who have to be subject to that story. It's like you know Samaritans. It's like yeah, boo, right? Yeah. Well, here's a story about a good one. It's like, whoa, isn't this story kind of generalizing and a little bit racist? No, just put it in the Bible. It's totally fine. But um, <laughs> the other one would be like when the lady comes to uh, Jesus to like pour oil on his feet and like all the guys around him are like, oh, this lady doesn't deserve to be around you. She's a woman or like she's beneath us. And I'm like, whoa, these are the people that Jesus is hanging out with 24 seven. But Jesus yeah. is like, no, no, no. I will let her wash my feet. That's like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> I don't know if this is necessarily even a good thing at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he's so nice. He let the lady clean his feet with the precious oils. That's mm -hmm. that's so progressive. <laughs> like, would you like to sit down? What kind with of a lesson is this? Anyway, yeah, like, lady, yeah. would you like to sit any, down? Any, you're like all this? equal. You can all wash my feet. <laughs> it's like any of you guys can wash my feet anytime you want to no it's like i feel like jesus was always there to keep the stratification of humanity in place right like mm -hmm. there's god and now there's a new layer which is me and then there's my followers who are immediately below me and then there's everybody else so if you want to upgrade you got to follow me because that will put you into this new cast of people who are my followers which gets you closer to god but like jesus was not about respecting the diversity of people and different minds and around the world. And, you know, Mr. Rogers, he had different people, different faiths, different colors, different genders uh, on his show all the time, different puppets. I mean, like different animals. That was the whole, that was the whole concept of the make-believe verse. But then he'd also go out to industries where he'd like talk to men and women working in plants and be like, hey, this is how fruit cups are made. This is how milk is, is gathered from cows. And it's like women farmers, men farmers, black people, white people, yeah. all working together. You never got that. You never got the expression that Jesus ever really appreciated humanity. But I only ever got that from Mister Rogers, and I feel like because of that, I would always listen to what Mister Rogers would tell me what to do over Jesus, which is like mm -hmm. this weird alien guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I do want to give props to Jesus for confronting injustice and hypocrisy. It does say in this list that Jesus fearlessly confronted religious hypocrisy corruption and injustice challenging authority and speaking truth to power that's what it got says from chat do you have any comments on that larry Confront who is talking truth to power this is a remarkable thing that jesus did oh going to chat gpt confronting injustice and hypocrisy he challenged uh religious hypocrisy corruption and injustice challenged authority and spoke to well truth. what he did was he challenged the old religion to set up a new religion mm. i mean he has his own uh 
know, authority. He, you know, he was, he was establishing a new one. He had to challenge the old one to do it. And as far as speaking truth, the power was the truth when he was just, I mean, first of all, we need to take a step back. Sure. I don't know if Jesus actually existed or not, but we do know the stories exist. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all they are. I yeah. mean, no more than you would believe that Muhammad split the moon in two and flew to heaven on a winged horse. Why do you not buy those stories, but buy the stories about Jesus? Right. Now, I mean, they're magic hero stories. They're right. just stories in a book written right. by preachers who want you to believe so that you can they can control you, put you in the pew, and get your money. Right. If Basically. I told you a story with a magical orange and a talking goat, people would be like, that's a fairy tale. But if I said... Right a magical apple and a talking snake. People are like, Nope, that's real. That actually happened somewhere. It's like, it's, I, it's, it's not the fact that it's an apple or an orange or a talking goat or a talking snake. It's the fact that this is fairy tales. We have nothing to compare it to in reality. Hey, right. Dread. Good to see Dread you. Pirate Higgs came in. Welcome for yes. Dread. Ahoy. Ahoy. Nice. Ahoy. Hope you're having we were, a good time. We're contrasting uh, Mr. Rogers and Jesus Christ. You got <laughs> I'll throw yeah. you cold into it. Yeah, <laughs> Dred, I know you're out in the cold right now, but have you? Did you ever have any experience with uh, watching Mister Rogers' uh, Neighborhood? No. No. Okay, it's not Canadian. Not a Canadian. Mm. Oh, okay. So am I late? What's up? Am I late? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's <laughs> fifty minutes. <laughs> it's only fifty minutes in an hour, so it's oh, all good. Sure. 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 Ah, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We appreciate the spirit of it, but uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Dred's, Dred's doing some real work. So time we, change. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dred, you're okay. doing real work. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> but the great thing is, uh, I feel like we have a better champion for how to behave, and it can even be a Christian who who does so, rather than using Jesus, because I feel like we have better role models already that exist. And as Jerry, uh, I'm sorry, as Larry said. We don't know if Jesus actually existed. We just know there's stories that exist. But we do know Mr. Rogers exists. And we have videos of him. And we have books by him. And we have music by him. And we have speeches by him. And we have congressional transcripts from him. And they're all awesome. And I'm saying, like, why are we wasting time with the stories from Jesus when we already uh, have a much better, in and, color, technicolor, <laughs> version of a guy who's already espousing really good values right. that we should just be listening to anyway like no magic involved no magic needed like right. we already got it like just mm -hmm. put this book away and be like oh, just watch this yeah. ranger's neighborhood if you do this and yeah. you listen to this guy and do what this guy says and still call this christianity we would literally be better off and christianity would be in a better light we already yeah. have a better role model we should do as uh, mr rogers does not It'll be roger's entity yeah, like there's no ambiguity behind it. There's there's no ambiguity to it. It's like we know that guy was a thing, and he and we agree. We I as an atheist agree with almost everything that was said on the show. There's no controversy. <laughs> there's no cancel. There's no requirement survivor. to throw reality out the window. Yeah, like I'm totally fine. It's like if someone had on their bumper sticker uh, a picture of Mister Rogers instead of like a cross or something. In my mind, I'm not thinking, oh, that guy's just like inhibiting education science uh reality teaching his kids the wrong way to be like if it was just a picture of mr rogers it's like i do what mr rogers did i'd be like oh that's a cool parent nice i love mr rogers too i'm an atheist i love that show everybody yeah. would love that show it'd be great another bumper sticker would be good would be uh would you like to be my neighbor bam huh. excellent Get on mm -hmm. a shirt dread wonderful <laughs> all right i'm gonna do uh a quick break to see if we had comments. We did have a couple of comments. Oh, uh, uh, Dredd, would you like to plug anything? Um, well, I'm still continuing to do my uh, my weekly uh, short sermons on uh, my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, and my mm. MP Sermons? Pirate. Sermons? What about? Oh, about everything. Like, uh, I just did one about Aardvark Appreciation Day. Oh, cool. Um, sometimes I just uh, base my sermons off of um, the Pastafarian calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, for, like every day has is uh, some kind of a day in, in Pastafarianism. So sure. it turned out that last Friday was Aardvark Appreciation Day. Nice. And um, uh, recently I did one on uh, 
International Women's Day. That was a mm. good one. Did you do Pi Day? It, I did Pi Day, but I I didn't get it up. So I've mm -hmm. got it now. You know, it's it's in the can. So mm -hmm. next year on Pi Day, it's it, I will release it. Well, that's PI, not PIE. No, I, I understand. No, I got three, for the listeners. Four. For the oh, listeners. I I yeah, 314. Mm -hmm. So I do, I have two questions, uh, two comments that I'm formatting into a question. One is from the episode, um, I'm calling God's Bluff. And the question is related to um, um, uh, how to talk to your parents and essentially call their bluff uh, if, if, if required sometimes. But this question is I'm going to give to Larry. Larry, the commenter is Electrical Crab 9286. Uh, they say that my mom's telling my siblings that dinosaurs never existed. What should I tell her? <laughs> well, my mom's depends. telling my siblings that dinosaurs never existed. Assume it's for a religious reason. My mom is telling my siblings. That's the we have evidence. Dynamic. We have all kinds of evidence. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you explain? Um, the fossils that we have, the fossil record okay. of dinosaurs, if if they never existed. And if you're going to, a lot of Christians will say, well, uh, Satan put them there to confuse us and, and make us not believe in the word of God, God you know, in the so. history. But I mean, which is better to believe that it occurred naturally, hmm. that, that these lived and there's a deep history of time or magic, hmm. yeah. you know? So that, that's your Dread. options there. Dread. What, uh, you know, what people haven't been reasoned into, they cannot be reasoned out of. Right. They can't. I, I disagree. I disagree. Well. Oh, uh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. Because no, I, I, you, I can't remember who said that, but uh, yeah. I, I, uh, I think it was Hitchens. I think Very Hitchens apt. said it. But, uh, I mean, we all were. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was a believer, and so was uh, Wombat, and I believe you yeah, were at one true. time, weren't yeah. you? Yeah. So we were reasoned out of it. Mm. It takes time. and It takes a long time. Yeah. And it takes a lot of good arguments, a lot of good rationale, but it what happens. I'm, and what I hear from this kid, person's perspective is that no one's invested that time in the mom, but also it's a willingness, too. If I was unwilling to change my mind, I wouldn't have changed my mind. It took a deep appreciation for knowing that I cared about what was true and what was actually false for me to change. And all the reason in the world won't affect that unless if I'm a willing participant in that process. And I think if you have those two, it is, fa it is feasible. It is feasible. Uh, Dread, oh, my next oh, question. John, John, Jonathan Swift. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, cool. Dread, this is a good question for you, I think. Um, okay. This is asked by, this is just a, a more extended e uh, comment, but from Drip, Driplocalus, who asks, hey, is it okay for me to privately wear a cross while I'm an atheist? Um, I have a necklace nearly a decade uh, old, and I occasionally wear it and look in the mirror for sentimental value. I'm no longer a Christian. But after learning how toxic religion is, I am now questioning if it is inappropriate to have the sentimental uh, trinket towards any, or any, any sentimental trinket towards any religious object. Is it okay to privately wear a cross while an atheist is the main question? Right. And of course, why not? Because, um, I mean, symbols are symbols. They just represent things. Mm. And Christians don't have, um, you know, a, a monopoly on the cross. You know, if if it doesn't mean Christianity to you, then we're, so what? Uh, right? Or if it wants, if he just wanted to remind you of the time you were a Christian, and how, how maybe you you yeah, left that too. you left the fold. There's a lot of reasons that you would have. Yeah. I mean, you're human. You have a lot of sentimentality about the past. Right. Yeah. Now, if it bothers you that you're actually wearing a cross, you could have it melted down and turned into a ring or a, 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 another piece of jewelry. Right. I love that idea. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I kind of yeah. do that. Yeah, there's a lot of jewelry. I mean, that, do that. Mm -hmm. you, you think about uh, like symbols like the file fought. Uh, cross you know the the uh, nazi symbol mm. which is way predated the nazis right right sure. it was an indian symbol i think a long exactly. time ago. western yeah. indian uh -huh. yeah yeah so uh you know 
That's a hard sell, though, if you're a, a yeah. political figure being like, it's not for yeah. Nazis. It's like, could we yeah. agree that it's now for Nazis? Can we just like, can we <laughs> can we say they did enough to claim that? And maybe you just like don't yeah. wear that while you say, please elect there me was, official because you're going to yeah, attract was, attention. There was a symbol uh, that the Nazis wore was an Iron Cross. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, well. The Iron Cross. Oh, it was okay. very popular uh, after the war in the 50s and 60s when uh biker biker gangs and some other people would wear it uh and it used to really uh tee off my dad yeah. who was Real a world war ii veteran hmm. you know i okay. had but, uh, i actually had a copy of uh Red Deer kipling's the jungle book hmm. and uh it was 100 years old and embossed on the front cover was a picture of an elephant and the file flock cross the what and, cross? Uh, the the Nazi symbol. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, and yeah, a that, lot of, of people course, that was, uh, were... you know, I think it was published in eighteen, you know, towards the end of the mm. the century there, long before you know Nazis were around. Right? Never picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here is my last question. This one goes to Talia before we close the show. Yeah, uh, we need to. Detective Mindless asks: Is there such a thing as an atheist society? Is there one? Well, yeah, <laughs> I started, you know, it's just kind of a club. You started you, uh, here in Knoxville. We started the Atheist Society of Knoxville. And uh, that was 22 years ago. And we're doing pretty well. We, it's now a nonprofit. Ooh. Um, so, uh, you know, if you, we have an Atheist Society live and well in the Bible Belt. So, right. yes, do that. Okay, cool. That's it for me. Thank you guys for coming to the show. Feel yep. free to check out or leave a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Franco Accounting says, looking good, Ty. We appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, uh, Mind Pirate, uh, uh, Dread Pirate, would you like to plug in? I'm good. I'm, I'm just so sorry I missed the, the largest part of the show. You're Canadian. You do not have to be sorry. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I, I was late last week, you know, but I got in in time. Yeah, we're yeah, in this weird time. Or a week right before. In the States yeah, and when the time changed. Mm. All right, Larry, what do you got? What do you got for I sign Oh, up. I think we all agree that souls were real. That's what we missed, uh, Dre. <laughs> and that we're ready good to close <laughs> the show. Is that right? Souls are no, real. You never wrote I don't. Is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. Perfect. All right. You can so find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. And be sure to click on the blog button for the radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. Man. Ramen. All right, let's do it real quick. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, all Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. Lead us not to ketoism, but mm. deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever mm. and ever. Raw, Raw man. man. <laughs> All right. Good.